Lord, I wish I was a catfish swimming in the deep blue sea. Out of all you good looking women fishing after me, fishing after me, fishing after me, fishing after me. Show enough, show enough he was, show enough. Hey there, we're going to take a look at the introductory riff to this first song in our learning guitar program that I'm calling the Country Blues Rock Theory course, um, where we're going to learn songs, classic country songs, classic rock songs, blues songs, and uh, talk about them through a music theory standpoint. So you get the music theory education, but you also get to learn fun songs, and you don't have to like just study jazz or classical to learn theory. So this is our first song, a nice simple blues song. We're starting with the blues because it's the root of basically all Western music and American music. And so um, I am not sure who originally wrote this song or how old it is, but the version that we're kind of working off of is the live Muddy Waters version from, I want to say, 55 or somewhere in there, in the 50s. Um, there's been a lot of versions. Jimi Hendrix played a fantastic version. Gary Clark Jr. has a great version. So the thing is, it's only one chord. It's one chord and a very simple riff based in the minor pentatonic scale. And it's really simple. Um, it's a slow, simple blues shuffle, one chord, and uh, it gives you a lot of room to solo and improvise. So it's a great song to start with because it's only one chord, but it's a song you can keep in your repertoire as you grow as a player because the more you play and the more you know, you could just work it over that one chord. So let's begin looking at the the chord and the minor pentatonic scale that this riff, this intro riff comes out of. So the chord is the E dominant seven, played in, we're gonna play it in open position. And that's root five, seven, major third. A seven is minor. That's why you have that kind of sound, that tension right there. Okay. We could also play it up here, E7 up here, same chord. Okay, just play it in closed position. We're playing the open position pentatonic scale, minor pentatonic scale. You can check the earlier lesson that goes along with this one, the, the open E pentatonic scale. And that is, I will call it the fingerings, just to remind you, open three, open two, open two, open two, open three, open three. Okay, now, this riff is all taken straight from that scale. Kind of the most important note in the entire riff because it's it's like a staple throughout the entire song. Even when you're not playing the riff and you're just playing the verses, this note is always kind of present. And it is this note right here. You're also gonna find it's a difficult note to play. If you're new to playing guitar and you're on an acoustic guitar, and you have the strings that it came with from the factory, you're going to find this very difficult to play. I recommend putting on extra light acoustic strings. Martin SP Super Performance are fantastic extra light strings because they hold their tone. 
and they keep tune uh, for a long time. Most extra light strings, you have a hard time keeping them in tune. So Martin SP, Phosphor Bronze. Phosphor Bronze is a earthier, warmer sounding string than 8020 Bronze. And 8020 Bronze will last you like about a month before your hands corrode the strings and they really don't lose their tone and their brilliance. Whereas Phosphor Bronze will last for a couple months. So, quick, that was a quick lesson on strings. But I would recommend putting extra light strings on your acoustic if you're new to the instrument. Um, I've played electric for 30 years. This is my first acoustic in probably over a decade. And I have extra light strings on it because, you know, my hand strength isn't what it used to be on an acoustic. You know, I've been playing electric, which is a much easier instrument to play. So, let's talk about this riff. It starts with the open E, and then goes to the high E. And then it goes to this most important note. And it does a couple of cool things. First of all, that note right there is the fourth. But we're bending it up a half step. To this note, the flat five, which is our makes it the minor pentatonic, the blues scale. So we're bending it, and that's what's giving us that bluesy vocal sound in this whole song, in this riff. So a couple of cool things are happening there, all one right after the other. Very staple blues techniques. One is a half step bend. And it, it's not play the note and then bend it. As soon as you attack the note, bend it up. And then you're bending down and you're pulling off. So you're actually making that sound of the open string by pulling off your finger. So it's a bend, release, pull off, all one right after the other. And that creates a triplet, one, two, three, one, two, three. So it's part of the cadence of the way these notes fall in this riff, is to have those three techniques back to back. I would recommend, if you're new to this song, just focus on playing that for a while. Make that the kind of the thing you really work is just building your hand strength, getting that bend to sound right, getting your pull off to sound right. Because if you can do that, the rest of this is like playing, it's easy. It's like falling off a lot. Okay, so it's open E, high E, and then we're playing this A with our second finger on the second fret of the G string, and we're we're not playing the A, we're attacking the A string with our pick and we're bending it up a half, a half step. Down, open. And then we're landing on the second fret on the D string, this E right here, which is the octave of our chord. And then it's going to play another open E. And then there's a, another last little kind of triplet where we play the E here, play the G on the third fret here, the minor third, and then hammer back on to this note that from the uh, back to the octave from the minor seventh of the octave. Now you don't have to. There's plenty of players who don't hammer that on. They just play. But uh, if you want to kind of get a little Hendrixy with it, it's harder on acoustic guitar. But you, know, you can get that little hammer on going.
And that is the uh, opening riff. So we we've, we've looked at the opening riff played with our third finger on the third fret, this E minor first pattern. Okay. Another way you could play it, this exact same notes, and I'm starting to get a uh, pretty w wicked blister on my second finger, so I'm gonna shift this up. And you play the same exact notes, but with your second finger on the third fret, and this is gonna put us in the E minor shape number two. Still E minor, but we're just beginning on the third. So, okay, so it's the same thing, same notes. Let's look at the uh, verse and the rhythm. This is where people kind of really go their own way and do their own thing. The same as even in that opening lick, if you listen to, that's just kind of like the stock lick that you can pull from. If you listen to the Muddy Waters version, if you listen to the Hendrix version, they use, they're completely different. They mostly focus on, and this, and this those kind of three note choices. That and they always hit that. That, those two notes, the third to the, the octave, um, show up in the uh, an important part in the song where it transitions uh, from the verse into the chorus. Remember, we only have one chord, so the there has to be some way to rhythmically push the song from the root, uh, from the verse into the chorus and distinguish those two parts. And it's done in a, a pretty cool kind of way where it just shifts the beat, and I'll show you that. So the verse is, um, we're going to use that note, right? That So it, it begins... Swimming in the deep blue sea. I have all you pretty women fishing after me, fishing after me. Show sure no. Shona Fama Shona I went to my baby's house and I sat on her front step. She said, Come on in now, baby. You know my husband just now left. 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 Show enough. Show enough he don't. Show enough. So let's kind of look at that rhythm, okay? The verse is going to do this, that um, on the two. It's like if you come in on the verse on the one, Lord, I wish I was a cafe. 
and then it does that, and then there's kind of a part where it just kind of drops out. Hendrix does it, Muddy Waters does it, where it kind of gets into the second part of the verse, and they just stop doing that punctuation. And they just kind of, you know, or, or, you know, just kind of leave it open. That sets the way up for this next kind of punctuation mark that transitions us into the chorus. And that is this, the third to the octave. And then that leads into the same note, right? But we're bending it and holding. And then I pick and then, so pick up, pick, down, open, and then back to the second fret of the D string. So the first one is, the second one is, and that, because you play this, it actually comes in on the three, whereas the first one in the verses, it comes in on the two. So that, that punctuation shifts a little bit during the chorus portion. So I'll play from the verse to the chorus real quick. Um, Lord, I wish I was a catfish swimming in the deep blue sea. I'd have all you pretty women fishing after me. So it's right there where that chorus starts. All you pretty women fishing after me. And it just does that like eight times. Fishing after me. Fishing after me. Fishing after me. Show sure no. Show sure enough, I'm up. Show sure enough. And then after that, the three times of show sure enough, it goes to this little um, major triad, major third, fifth root, to set up for the verse. I went to my baby's house. So let me show you that transition real quick. Um, show enough. Whoops. Show enough. Show enough, I'm a. Show enough. I went to my baby's house. Okay, so that's the verse and the chorus. So that has been our introductory look at the tune Catfish Blues. Hope you enjoyed it.